Welcome, Dr. Ivory, to our History in the Making. I know you're up to a lot, even though you're retired. So what are you up to and how are you making a difference? Well, uh, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this interview. Um, I, you know, I just uh, full of energy about a lot of things that are going on in my life right now. And I've started uh, a nonprofit uh, and I have I started a coaching uh, kind of outlet for for what I consider ministry and that I'm trying to reach a broader audience. And so uh, so a lot of things are happening. I'm, I'm engaged in writing a book. And um, so, yeah, so a lot of things have uh, happened. Wow, that's a lot. How did what motivated you to get started? So. Uh, maybe uh, several years ago, I started reflecting on different kinds of things in my life and the principles, you know, uh, that had become a part of my uh, my ideas about intercultural uh, relationships and intercultural communication, and um, and so there was not but there was a, a certain time when uh, I was have uh, attending a spiritual coaching event, and I. Um, was uh, met a, a person there who was an, also an African-American. We were one of few African-Americans there. And um, she was involved in cross-cultural work. Uh, and so we both were there at the same time. And we we started talking about, well, you know, we thought it would be important, you know, what would be, what, it would be uh, really important to kind of bring some of the things that we were learning uh, to churches because churches uh, were not necessarily doing a lot of, Cross cultural work, uh, especially at the organizational level. And so we were we were first thought about how we might bring this, you know, this what we were learning to the to the church. Uh, and as we began to reflect, we began to look at some of the issues that we experienced uh, that may be, uh, you know, uh, kind of represent where the industry was uh, at the time. Uh, this whole work is called, uh, you know. Uh, uh, inclusive uh, diversity and, and inclusion kind of minute, uh, work. And we thought that one of the things that was missing was that people, when they got to a certain stage, uh, got to, you know, where they were learning about, you know, the more they became aware of things, they, they learned a lot, but then they weren't able to take that learning to the next step, you know, in, in terms of putting into action. So that was one of the things that we wanted to see if we could uh, do a better job with. Uh, and so uh, we began to uh, talk about you know, some things and uh, these principles that I had been, you know, I began to think about, well, what, what kind of things have, have I learned? What has worked for me? And um, and I got, I think where, where it really gelled for me is when I got invited to do uh, a talk on Martin Luther King Jr. on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, um, you know, uh, a celebration. And so I began to kind of pull together uh, certain kinds of principles that I thought that people uh, needed to to do in order to be a better, do a better job. And so, uh, uh, so there were about six principles. Um, one of them that, um, that, you know, I like to share is the first one it has to do with connections. How do we make connections with people and, uh, you know, and and kind of if we don't have that connection, and uh, then, um, you know, then it's kind of hard to do the rest of those principles. You work these principles with your nonprofit and your coaching and in your book, or how does that work? So yeah, the principles um, uh, they are they are meant to be a part of a process. Uh, at the same time, they provide structure uh, so that you can learn them, but they, but you have you have to do all of them to put them into practice. And the the first principle uh, has, as I mentioned, had to do with connection. Uh, and uh, by connection, what I mean is, um, how do we first make contact with people who are different from us? And that's has been complicated for me as an African American. Uh, because for I grew up was a child during the period when when segregation was was in force. Uh, you know my 
my folks came from the South. Uh, we moved to Miami, but uh, it was still during that time, right before segregation uh, uh, integration had started. And so, uh, and I think we still live in a legacy of that today. Uh, in most communities, even in California, you'll find that uh, neighborhoods are, are, you know, separated by race, pretty much, or or class, or both. And so, um, if we're going to tackle this uh, this idea of inclusion or of inclusive community, which is what the, the work is all about, then we first of all have have to figure out how to get people together in an authentic way so that they can encounter one another. And you can't very well do that if you are separated by, uh, you know, by artificial boundaries or by uh, the boundaries that we create based on our fears, our biases, our prejudices, and that kind of thing. Uh, and so, uh, when I reflect back, uh, you know, on my own life, for example, I I can look at various instances where uh, where that hurdle. I, I really began to understand and appreciate that principle, you know, beginning when, uh, for example, when my, uh, when my, when I was, my uh, elementary school got integrated. And so for the first time, uh, I came in contact with white student. But then another thing happened is, you know, uh, the, you know, the more the, uh, when the black kids came, all of a sudden within a year, all the white kids moved away. Uh, and so we were left with segregation again. But uh, how do we, so that's one of the problems that we have to deal with in terms of the legacy of segregation, uh, because it, it's not only hurt, uh, you know, it, 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 it was very, the, the, uh, the decision for, for white, uh, for white uh, people to move away from the communities when black came in or the neighborhoods, was that it created a, a situation where uh, it didn't, the community wasn't there, uh, feelings got, uh, you know, not, not addressed. Um, but the biggest harm was that uh, people didn't learn uh, how to overcome those those fears and really learn and, and appreciate and care for one another. Uh, and that's what community is all about. So when we did, uh, deprive ourselves of an opportunity to to uh, be in contact and fellowship with one another. We deprive ourselves of, of community, and community, I think, is one of those essential God-given things that we have as a part of our humanity. And when we uh, don't have that, uh, we are we are missing a part of ourselves. You know, I always like to think of that. There's a part of me and the person that I'm looking at, and and. If I don't uh, take advantage to to encounter that part of myself and that person, uh, then I lose a, a valuable part of who I am or could be. And I think that one of the things that came home for me, um, you know, one of the significant times in my life when uh, another time I should say that this principle was uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, kind of surface was when I was doing a CPE program in Atlanta uh, at the Georgia Mental Health. And as part of my program, we were in the alcohol and drug department, they called it DAC. Uh, and so we were, uh, there was a couple of other uh, uh, aspiring clergy people, persons that are with me. And we were assigned different people to, to interview and talk to and, and kind of introduce to them that, um, theological, spiritual peace. And so I got assigned to a, a young man who happened to be gay. And uh, and talking with that person, uh, I, I, I encountered that person on a deeper level. And, and all of a sudden, you know, I began to understand what Jesus was saying about how we could love one another at a deeper level and, and encounter one another. So love became a, a different kind of thing for me, but uh, was beginning, I should say, become a different kind of thing in terms of not just words that you say, uh, but also uh, how you encounter people, how you care for people, how you affirm, pe affirm people, and that kind of thing. And, and I remember also reading about a similar kind of experience at Howard Thurman. Howard Thurman is a, was an important mentor and is an important mentor for me in terms of spirituality. 
And he talked about when, when he went to India, uh, he met with a famous port there. And he talked about encountering this per person in much the same way in which, you know, he had kind of like a spiritual experience where uh, you encounter the person at the soul level, not just at a, a physical or emotional level, but it's very soul level. And at that level, you you have you be, you begin to understand that person uh, as uh, someone who is inseparable from who you are. And so, what are what are you doing to begin this work now? So, to uh, as I mentioned, um, I have created a a nonprofit uh, and with a colleague. Uh, who lives in Houston, and so we're we're still at the start it stage, pretty much. Even though we started it, you know, uh, a number of years ago, uh, I had since I was uh, pastoring, I couldn't go as you know full stream uh, steam ahead as I wanted to. Uh, but now that I'm retired, uh, I'm I'm ha and have more energy and time. I'm beginning to pursue that, and so we are at the process of developing, our, uh, spanning our board. We've had a board for a number of years and trying to figure out how to move forward in a much more um, uh, assertive way in terms of trying to do training, uh, trying to help organizations figure out how they can do this process mm -hmm. to, uh, to uh, uh, you know, so that their organization can be more uh, have more of a vision and a process for achieving an inclusive community. Uh, what are the implications for an organization who wants to do this, for a church, for small groups who embrace on who embrace in that? Uh, we've also created a created a kind of a survey tool where that has those principles. And so when you take the survey, it allows us to see what areas you are doing well in, what area you might need some help in, and therefore uh, we can look at certain strategies for your organization um, to uh, to do that. Uh, so the coaching uh, is another aspect of my work, another uh, area of my work. And so the coaching has to do with taking these principles to uh, a very individual level. Uh, and it works a lot like spiritual uh, direction, actually, in that you are kind of walking alongside of another person, you're not doing a psychotherapy or anything like that, but you you are giving them a, an, an objective view of what you're seeing and uh, kind of a listening or sounding board for uh, and helping them to reflect at a deeper level of this journey. And so the journey is uh, has to do with how we all need to have a social vision of what we want the world to look like, just like Jesus. And when we have that that social vision, then we need to ask how, what role can I play? And what do I need to get out of the way in order to reach that, that goal or to be in companion and relationship with others who are pursuing that goal? So uh, so my work uh, in coaching is on that level. And I, you know, I'm really looking forward to that because I think that's gonna be really uh, uh, fulfilling for me. Well, I should also add, before we close that, I'm also writing a book on, on, on this. And, and the purpose of the book is kind of to lift up these principles in more detail and be kind of a companion uh, for people who want to learn more and who want to see more how the uh, the principles get expressed. Uh, and uh, so that, that's in the work, and I'm hoping to have that done uh, in a few months. I, I think I'm probably about halfway done. I'm uh, really excited about that. It's hard work, but I'm going to uh, get it done so that I can, uh, you know, uh, really uh, have all the tools and resources I need to to move forward. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Well, I'd just like to express gratitude for the opportunity uh, to have to share a little bit about my work and what I'm excited about and uh, the way that I think that God is using me in these uh, retirement days. And I want to take a moment to invite people to find out more about my work. Um, my nonprofit, you can find online at www 
dot uh, c for iic.com and my uh, coaching website is um, is called community quests and you can reach that at www.communityquestcoaching.com so i look forward to seeing you there and uh, uh, thank you so much uh, god bless and may God all keep us all moving in this direction of how we can build the kingdom of God. Uh, and for me, that translates into the, um, the an inclusive community. Thank you. Thank you.